Hey guys, it's Ross here and welcome back to Flatpak Effects and thank you to Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. Now in this video, we're gonna have a look at how to create this Vox style map animations. Now there's two parts to this animation. The first part is looking at how to create this part, which is the highlighted country effect. And the second part of it, I'm gonna show you how to create this Vox style little pop-up. Now for this tutorial, we're also gonna be using Google Earth Studio. Now if you're new to that program, then you might wanna check out my first tutorial which I'll link to in the little card above and I'll also put a link in the description below and I recommend watching that through because that's going to run through all the basics of Google Earth Studio so in this video I'm not going to go through all the details of how the program works I'm merely just going to run through it and show you how to create the animation so over in Google Earth Studio I'm just going to use these settings here and start a new composition now for my animation I'm going to be using France but you don't have to use that. You can use any country you like and you can follow the same steps. But for me, I'm just gonna search for Paris straight up and I'm going to use this as my center point here to create my animation. Now, the first part of this, I wanted to basically create a little bit of an animation of it zooming through. Now here, I want to create a tracking point that the camera is going to orient around. So what I want to do is set my camera target right here on this point. Now what that does is it pops up with two menus down here. One is the camera rotation, which you can't change anyway in this mode. The other one is the camera target. Now we don't want to change those settings in there because that's gonna move that target position. So if you needed to move that, that's where you go into those settings and change it. We wanna mess around with the camera position. Now what you'll find is that whenever I move the camera, it will automatically center back to that point. So it's gonna move essentially around that position, always focusing on that point. So this is like your point of interest if we're using a 3D camera. So what I want to do is I'm just gonna come over here because this is gonna be the end of our animation, create just a simple keyframe here, and we can create a little bit of animation here, maybe something like that. And now we've got a little bit of an animation moving through like this. Now, when I come back here, I want to basically start to zoom out. So I'm gonna bring up the altitude here and I want to reveal all of France because we're gonna use this as our highlight. And then I can bring it back even further here, scale this out, maybe start with a little bit of a zoom effect here as well. Now you gotta remember that this is always moving around that point of interest. So wherever we move the camera, it's always going to realign to that point in this mode. Now, if you don't like that or you don't want that, then you'll need to watch my previous video, which I go through how to basically allow you to create a free roving camera around your scene. I'm also just gonna create another set of keyframes here because I want a little bit of movement if I drag this out, I want it to kind of slow down at that point and then it's going to move quickly into that next scene. I can also right click and make them all auto ease and that's going to allow us to animate that camera a little bit better. So one thing is if I click on that, I can now control basically the movement of that. Now there's two graphs here. One is the value and one is the speed graph. Now these are very different. So you need to be aware of how they work. The value graph will change the value, meaning it's going to actually move the camera to a different position. The speed graph is going to be how quickly it does that movement. So the idea here is, is to try and smooth out those graphs as much as possible. Now, something else you can also do, if, if this is not quite working the way that you want it to, then you can also just come in here and delete, say those end keyframes. And anytime you're animating the camera, you want to try and make it as gradual as possible. So by that, I mean that you can't just come in here and basically move the camera to extreme sort of angles and then expect that the camera is going to or that the camera is going to animate it all nice and smoothly. So you need to take that into consideration. So if the camera is coming down on that sort of angle, then maybe look at bringing it down here to try and continue that sort of same movement. So you wanna try and create a nice smooth graph here. If you get really if you get really stuck with your animation, it's not smooth, just delete some keyframes, start again, 
But these are the sort of graph movements that you want. You want to try and smooth it out so it's nice and smooth like this. And then maybe bring the camera over here. Create another keyframe there. At this point, it's good to try and think ahead about where you can position different text in your scene. But for instance, if I come over here and right click, I can create a new tracking point. I can also right click on my point of interest here, and that's going to create a tracking point in red. Now, these are essentially going to be tracking points or null objects inside of After Effects when we export it. Now that I've got my animation how I want, I'm now ready to export the thing. So I can come up to render and then I can choose how I want to export it. So for me, I'm going to use an image sequence. I can select the destination and I can set up the dimensions of how much I want. Also, I'm going to use my After Effects.jsx and I'm also going to leave this coordinate space as global. I can also choose where I want to save it and then I can just hit start and then wait for that to render out. But before we move on, a quick word from today's sponsor. Invato Elements is a one-stop shop for all your creative needs. Now, I've personally been using them for the last few months on every project that I've been working on. For one project in particular that I've been working on, I've used a lot of assets from Envato Elements. Now, if you're someone who wants to use a lot of map animations in your videos, these two are really interesting. The first is this map route animator, and it's really handy to have this because it makes creative creating these style of map animations really easy. So you might want to check out that. And the other one that I really like is this one here, which is the flat world map animator. And this allows you to pretty much just go to any part of the world and you can basically create different highlight effects as well as lines and add text over the top. So if you're someone that wants to use a lot of map animations in your videos, then these are two templates I definitely recommend checking out. And they're made super affordable with an Envato Elements subscription. Now, if you wanna check them out, then I'll put a link in the description below. What I need to do is come over to After Effects. I'm gonna come down to Scripts and just run Script File. Now I need to navigate to wherever I've saved that. And I'm just gonna select that .jsx file and hit open. Now, as soon as I do that, it's automatically gonna create a new composition with our map animation already in there. And it's gonna create the 3D camera and everything that we need. Because we got two tracking points that it's already created, it also creates text for each of those layers. So what I can do is I can take one of those text layers. So where I've got say my main tracker here, I can just take that text layer. I'm just gonna hit Y and reposition that anchor point there. Move it back a little bit. If I come back here, I can just drag up on the scale by holding shift. And if I double click on that text, I can also come over here to my character and just scale this up to be whatever level I want. We're really just trying to scale up the size. Um, then I can call this whatever I want. So for me, I'm just gonna be using France. And then with that layer, I can just use the tool here, the 3D tool here to move this and position it however I want. And what I did with mine is I just came over to the toggle modes and I changed this to be overlay. And it's gonna kind of give it this interesting look here that we've got on screen, which is quite nice. And behind that, I wanna put in that map. So when I went online, I just found this image of France. And what I did was I just basically put that into my composition and I made it 3D. Now, as soon as we do that, it's gonna kind of mess up its position. But what I want to do is make sure that it's selected as that tracker. And then I can come back to the transform properties and just reset that. And then I can kind of reposition this by scaling it up here and roughly then get it into position here. Now, once I've got that in the right position, then I can come over and also make that overlay. And I'm just gonna hit T on the keyboard and create a bit of an opacity keyframe here. And then maybe one here at the start. And that's gonna create a little bit of an animation on of that layer. It kind of gives it that edge. I can go through and mess around with trying to make this a bit more even on the edge. Another thing I did here was just grab my pen tool and basically just drew around that layer to basically have it kind of cut off around that border. 
This was my original comp here. I followed all the same steps and this is what I kind of ended up with. So the next part is as the camera's zooming through, what I want to do is then basically fade these off. So on my original comp, what I did was I went into those two layers. I created opacity keyframes here, which mimicked the beginning one. And then I basically faded them off. So as the camera went all the way through, it basically then finished by going zooming all the way into Paris. Now for the last part, what I did was I added this little title. So what I did was I created a new composition. I gave this one a name and you wanna make sure that this is also set to the same settings as your project and then hit okay. Now in here, I want to create the title and this is the title that I created. Now to create the little cross, all I did was I basically created a new solid and it doesn't really matter about the color, but then I just created this sort of one line like this with that layer selected and created another mask. So you'll need to click away and then click back to get that little animation. Then I can come up to effect down to generate and add the stroke effect. Now on that stroke effect, I can then change the color and I want to be on transparent and then scale this up, make sure that all masks are selected Drag this up as much as you want here. Also give it a bit of hardness and then kind of just make the final adjustments. And then you've got your little cross for your title. This can be whatever you like, but that's what I did. I've seen it in a Vox video. And then for the title part, what I did was I created some new text. I can give this title, I'm just gonna turn off that background. I can scale this up, kind of position this wherever I need it to be. And over here under the effects and presets, if you come down to the text and then animate in, there's lots of different options that we can use. Now for this one, I want to use straight in by character and I'm just gonna drag this onto that layer. It's gonna have this sort of animation like this. If I come down to that text and down to the animator, I basically want to come down to that position property and I want to make the first number zero and then drag down on this number here. And what that does is it basically moves that animation to the bottom so that it's animating in from the bottom part. And to get it to animate in from the back part to the front, what we can do is we can basically change this or flip it around and drag this front part in like this, make this easy ease, and then we get that little animation of that text layer. So we kind of get that text animating in from the back forward. The back part of this, I wanted to create that little banner. So I just come up here with my rectangle tool, make sure that I haven't got anything selected. And for the fill, I'm just using a sort of dark gray color here with no stroke and I can just draw out a box that sits behind that layer. Drag it down behind my text like this. Make sure that yellow marker is over the top. Animator, what I'm going to do is parent my text to that layer, and then I need to create a position property here by hitting P to bring up the position, create a keyframe there, create one there as well, and just drag this back so that it kind of animates in like this. Now to animate the text so that it only appears inside that box, what we're going to do is with that text layer selected, what I can do is search for set matte, add that to that layer. And I want to make sure that this is set to that shape layer. And what that does is it basically tells it, okay, I only want to reveal the text when it's inside that box layer underneath. So that's a really simple way of doing that. And then I can also give it a little bit of motion blur. And then to make the whole box reveal, what we can do is create a new box, which sits over the top. Just turn that layer off. And also to that shape layer, I can add another set mat and use the hidden shape layer that we have as a reveal. So we kind of end up with that reveal. The other thing you can also do is copy that and paste it onto that text as well. If I duplicate that layer, paste it as the second option and it will also apply that to that text. So we end up with that animation looking like that. So now we've got that animation, we want to put that into a composition. And what I can do is I can drag that new title in here 
and then I can make it 3D. And I want to make sure that this is tracked to either that tracking point or the text tracker that we created in the original part of the composition or the tutorial. And then come down to transform options and just reset it. Maybe scale this up very slightly, move it into whatever position I need. And then I can just drag in on the start here to delay that animation so that we kind of end up with that animation coming in like this. So then it's just a matter of repositioning that however you like to get that finished effect. But that's how you create this overall animation. So if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.